Hello, it's spooky season. And if you like your spooky with a splash of romance, this list is for you. Hi, I'm Colleen Delaney. I talk about books and writing. Let's get into it. So of course this list has my top 11 paranormal romances, but that does include a few series. So this is literally like 20 some books. I hope that's all right with you. In this list, we have some werewolves. We have some witches. We have some vampires. We have some ghosts. We have some a little more off the beaten path ones like ghouls and berserkers. And there are some fae and there are some mermaids. It's really a good thorough list of all the kind of spooky romances you could want. I'm gonna start with my recommendations and I'm gonna end with two books that are on my current TBR. I'll hopefully remember to put chapters in so you can jump ahead if you want to. But to begin, we're gonna start with a book I just finished two days ago because it was absolutely fantastic. And that book was Call to the Deep by Desiree Nicoli. And this book was so good. First of all, if you're looking for like New England coast fall vibes, this book has it for you. We're on the crashing coasts of Maine. We open with a fishing boat and the captain, Killian, responding to a distress call that another boat has made and finding a woman basically floating in the water and everyone else from her crew is gone. She's the only survivor and they haven't found any other bodies. So it's just her. Her name is Lorelai. She and Killian hit it off right away. But then Lorelai slowly begins to realize and have these crazy memories that she might not be entirely human. And then some weird stuff happens that causes her to realize that she is actually a mermaid. And mermaids in this world eat humans. So she has to battle her growing feelings for Killian with her growing taste for human flesh. This book was so fantastic. I read it so quickly. I kept asking my children to please leave me alone so I could read it. So if you're looking for a fun mermaid, October vibes, paranormal romance, definitely pick this one up. And I absolutely love the cover. I'm obsessed with the big moon because you know I love the moon. And yeah, read it. It was so good. My next recommendation I got on my Kindle, so I do not have a hard copy of it, but I'll put the lovely cover for you right here. And it's called I'll Come Back to You by Cherish Reed. So this is the story of Whitney and her sister, and they run a bed and breakfast that they have inherited. And there is some crazy stuff going on to the point that they think they have a mean ghost. So they call this <laughs> like reality ghost show that reminds me of the one that's on the Travel Channel, which I can't remember the name of, where this like psychic will come in and like clear the energy and tell you if the ghosts are there or whatever. So Whitney's kind of like ex-crush from when they were kids, like high school, and then they had like one night in their 20s. Dion works on the show. He's like one of the producers. He helps with the sound. And so he shows up. Now this is a show that usually does like fake ghost stuff and they very quickly realize that they're dealing with a real ghost. This one was so fun and like scary at points. So if you're looking for one that definitely has more like dread build up and like it's spooky but very sexy, this is a great one. I know that Cherish is working on the sequel right now because she and I are Twitter followers. We follow each other on Twitter. And I'm not sure though if she has any sort of release date, but I'm very excited and we'll definitely read it because she's a fantastic author. And this one is very fun. So if you want spooky ghost romance, I'll come back to you by Cherish Reed. The next group of books I'm gonna talk about because it is a series I've talked about a lot in this channel and it is the Stay a Spell series by Juliet Cross. Um, this is a series about a group of sisters who are witches who live in New Orleans and each sister has a book in which they meet their soulmate. So the first one is Wolf Gone Wild and it is about the sister, what is her name? Evie. This one is about Evie and Evie is a uh, like master curse breaker. She's really good at that. And Mateo is a werewolf who has been cursed so he cannot change. So he seeks out Evie and they obviously get together and it's very hot. The series is like real hot, real spicy. So if you're looking for real spicy, this is a good one. I love the setting of New Orleans. This particular book takes place during fall. So you get all like the good fall vibes too. There's some tarot cards in it. It's a great romance to kick off a fantastic series. Book two is Don't Hex and Drive. And this one is about Isadora and uh, Devraj, and he is a vampire. And this book has the best meet cute I've ever read in my life because Isadora is riding her bike at night and Devraj hits her with his car 
<laughs> but because she's a witch and they're like somewhat immortal in this series, she can heal very fast and she's okay, but it was just a fantastic meet cute. This is very much one of those in which Devraj like knows that they're supposed to be together and Isadora fights it for a while, but it's super fun. I'm not a huge vampire romance reader anymore, but I really loved this book. I thought that Julia Cross did a great job with giving like kind of a new twist on the vampire trope. Next is my favorite book in the series, which is Witches Get Stitches. And this one is about Violet and Nico. So we open a few years earlier in which Violet and Nico have like had like a very intense hookup at a party in somewhere in Texas. I think they're like Austin. And then we jump two years later and Nico's cousin is Mateo from Wolf Gone Wild, um, Evie's now husband at this point. And Violet is very much like, we're just gonna be friends. That was a one-time thing, but we're gonna be such good friends. And Nico is very much like, I'm a werewolf. I know that I'm supposed to be with you forever, but you can take as long as you want to realize the same thing. They end up working in a tattoo parlor together because Violet is a tattoo artist and she comes up with this idea of like how to tattoo spells onto different supernatural creatures to kind of like make their, make their lives a little bit easier. They have the best first hook. Well, they technically their first hookup is in Austin, but their eventual New Orleans hookup is maybe one of the best first hookups I've ever read in a novel. It's so fantastic. And I just love these two. I love this cover. I love this book so much. I'm really excited to continue reading the series because as soon as I finish it, I'm gonna reread it again from the beginning and I can't wait. Next, we have always practiced safe hex. This is about Livy and her soulmate, Gareth, who's a Grimm. And Grimm is kind of like a weird supernatural that are very secretive and they don't want anyone to know what their powers are. This book is crazy that it worked for me because it has two tropes I don't like, enemies to lovers and workplace romance. Because, but Julia Cross is such a good writer that it didn't even matter that those weren't my favorite tropes. I loved this love story. It was so fun. It's a little dark, which I like a little bit of a dark love story. So definitely pick up Always Practice Safe Hex. The fifth book is coming out on Halloween this year and it's called The Resting Witch Face and it's about the oldest sister, Jules, and Reuben, who's like the head vampire in New Orleans. We've watched them throughout the series because this is a second chance romance, so they used to be together and now they're apart and now they're gonna get back together. I can't wait to read it. I wish it was coming out a little earlier in the month so I could read it before Halloween, but I'll still love it in November. Lastly, there is a um, holiday short story collection called Walking in a Witchy Wonderland, which I read last December and will read again this December because it was so much fun. It's just a collection of short romance stories from the couples we've already met. Plus it's got an intro to Livy and Gareth because it came out before Practice Safe Hex. And it has a novella for two side characters, which um, are JJ and Charlie who work at like the family bar, who I did not think I needed their love story, but it was fantastic, phenomenal, such a good love story. So that's Stay a Spell by Julia Cross. Absolutely love it. If you haven't read it and you're into witches, werewolves, vampires, grims, all that stuff, definitely pick it up. The next books I'm gonna talk about are part of a series that actually never got finished, but I'm still holding out hope that maybe the third one will come out because the first two were phenomenal. There's no like open-ended ending in the second one in which you'd feel like, oh my God, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I just wanted more from this world because I liked it so much. Uh, these are the Hunt the Moon and Touch the Sky by Carrie Cole. So the first one is Hunt the Moon and our hero and heroine are Luke and Izzy. And Izzy is a, werewolf who's never really been allowed to accept being a werewolf and she comes to her foster brother's wedding which is in montana and when she gets there she realizes her foster brother is marrying a werewolf and she's surrounded by werewolves and she freaks out and they call themselves shifters in this this is one where they're shifters they're wolf shifters luke is kind of like the alpha of this group and when he sees izzy he automatically knows like that's his mate but she's in like a really really bad place because She's kind of had it drilled into her brain that she's like a monster and she's become like a complete vegetarian. And so she's really, really weak because like her body can't process. Obviously she's like part wolf. So her body can't really process that kind of diet. This book has a lot of like the hurt comfort trope in it. Like Luke is like taking care of Izzy, trying to make her healthier. Um, it was very hot and very fun. These stories, this particular series is a little bit darker. So there's like murder and like, I can't remember if there's any in this one, but definitely in the next one, there's like off-page sexual assault. It's definitely like a darker paranormal romance. The second one, Touch the Sky, is such a fantastic paranormal romance. It's one of my favorites I've ever read. I'd say before I read the Stay a Spell series, it was definitely my favorite, but then Witches Get Stitches would probably contend with it. In this one, we have Vaughn, who is, um, he's like a cop, and he 
is good friends with Luke and he's a combo shifter. So he is both a wolf and an eagle shifter, which is crazy. So he has two voices in his head and trying to figure out like where he belongs is a big part of his life. And he's like one of my favorite heroes of all time. He's fantastic. And then we have Hannah and Hannah is on the run because something horrible has happened in her pack. She's a werewolf shifter, but she's also a witch. So she has some like extra powers. She can see things if she touches them, which makes it really difficult for her to like live her life because she sees horrible things if she touches something that someone who did something horrible touched. It's very difficult for her. She wears gloves a lot. I really liked a weird trope in this one, and that is that Hannah takes human birth control to kind of like mess with her hormones so she can't tell who her mate is and neither can her mate. Fabulous fun trope. I've read this book two times. I loved it. I really do hope that the third one comes out eventually, if not with the publisher it was with. Maybe Carrie Cole will self-publish it because I really just want to read it. So that was Hunt the Moon and Touch the Sky by Carrie Cole. Next, I have a nice, short, quick novel. I think it's considered like a novelette and it's Given to the Ghoul by Desiree Nicoli, who also wrote Called to the Deep. This is a fun paranormal because it has a type of hero that I've never read before in another book. So in this quick story, which is definitely one of those, like if you have like an evening and you want to read something, grab it for your Kindle or whatever e-reader you use and just read it straight through. We have Mina, who is our heroine, who has moved to this weird desert town, which has like great rent, but they have this weird like lottery type thing where once every, I can't remember the exact time frame, they pick a name, that person has to go basically out into the desert to be sacrificed to the ghouls. Mina doesn't necessarily believe there are ghouls out in the desert, but she does understand that she will probably die of thirst or starvation or whatever if she goes out into the desert. But she does, and she is found by a shape-shifting ghoul who, if you can imagine, is actually extremely hot and very good and bad and wants to bring her the skulls of her enemies. This is a great through and through monster romance. You have a true monster who is going to do monstrous things for the person that they love. And I loved it. The next recommendation I have is a very long series and it's the Highland Magic series by Kerrigan Byrne. I'll put up a bunch of the different covers because I got them all on Kindle. These are all like short novellas. They're probably under or just around 100 pages. These are historical paranormals. So our heroes in some of them are berserkers or druids or I think there's even like a warlock in one. I can't remember. But they're those type of characters. The heroines are either human or they're witches. So you get that real like old-fashioned magic, <laughs> like Highland magic, like the series. These are very, very sexy, very hot, and very fun. I read like three in like two days, and then I read three more in two days. They're very addictive once you start reading them. I really like the balance of historical and paranormal in them, and Kerrigan Byrne, as always, is a great writer. There's a lot of really fun tropes. I've talked about these in a lot of my wrap-ups more like in December of last year, I believe, when I was reading them, because there's a lot of my favorite tropes in these. I forgot to mention that several of the heroines are banshees because there's a really fun thing with one of the banshees is supposed to like come murder one of the men. And then she's like, oh, but I kind of want to sleep with you. So they have sex. And then she's like, oh, I don't really want to murder you. I kind of want to sleep with you again. And so she keeps putting it off and putting it off because she keeps wanting to sleep with them. That one's fantastic. I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is, but right now I'll put up the cover of that one so you know which one that one is. Next up, I have totally different is The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. This is a contemporary fantasy romance with a witch and a warlock who live in Graves Glen, which is kind of like the star's howl hollow of the paranormal world. Our heroine Vivi, like, 10 years or more before the book began, cursed her ex-boyfriend Reese because he left her to go back to Wales and she was really mad. And so she did this like drunk curse that she didn't think worked. So fast forward, Reese comes back to Graves Glen and oops, it did work because as soon as he crosses back, his magic goes crazy and so does the magic in the entire town, which is fantastic. This is definitely like a cozy paranormal fantasy type of read. You've got so many fall vibes because it is October. You obviously have the witches. You have a fun supporting cast. The sequel of this just came out and it's called The Kiss Curse. And it's about her cousin whose name I can't remember, but she is a character in here. I haven't read that one yet or read any reviews, so I don't know anything about it. But I did enjoy this one a lot. I thought this was a great book also if you're looking to dip your toe into romance from fantasy, if you're like coming from the fantasy genre. This is a great like sort of crossover because the fantasy plots in this are very heavy. Next, I've got Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. And this is a really fun, quick novella. If you want to read something spooky and sexy one night this October, grab it for your e-reader and dive in. 
And this, our hero is Luke and he's a werewolf and our heroine is Chastity and she is from a family of werewolf hunters. And basically what happens is someone in our family has a vision that she will like, her first kill will kill her or something like that. I can't remember the exact wording. But so they decide never to let her be a hunter. So what happens is her sister's out hunting one night and she's wearing her sweatshirt and this werewolf like grabs the sweatshirt and like takes it because he can smell his mate on it. And then they have this fun, weird world of romance that I absolutely love because you get the whole like, I'm going to murder you or we can make out, which is like one of my favorite tropes. I can't help it. I love it so much. I wish so badly this was a series, but it came out a long time ago and I don't think Talia Hebert's going to write any more in it, which is too bad. Next, I have a very quick read, Fangs by Sarah Anderson. I got it from the library, so here is the cover. And this is like a graphic novel, fun, read in an hour comic about a vampire and a werewolf who are dating. And it's just like so wholesome and lovely and hilarious and I read it last October and it was just like such a nice cozy fun fantasy romance read that's pretty much all I can say about it because it is a comic and very fast but it's lovely next I've got Tall Dark and Wolfish by Lydia Dare which is another historical romance with werewolves so in this we have Lord Westfield who is a werewolf who suddenly cannot turn into a werewolf and then we have Elspeth who is a renowned healer and he goes to get healed by her basically. There's also a lot of like werewolf politics in this. And if you like sort of like political intrigue in historicals, I'd recommend this one. I was on a podcast a few years ago, I think two years ago, talking about this book and I really enjoyed it. I'll link it in the description. It's, De it's the Deconstructing Damsels podcast in which you talk about the role of women in romance novels, which was a blast for me to be on. <laughs> so again, if you're looking for a nice historical with werewolves, Check out Tall, Dark, and Wolfish. Lastly, I have to talk about Wicked Lovely by Marissa Marr. And this is going to be really weird to talk about because I don't necessarily remember this series so well. But I'm talking about it because I think this series is the reason I've never gotten into the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Mass. Because I already read an amazing fairy-centric YA romance series. I just read it in the early 2000s when it wasn't huge yet. So in the series, we have our heroine, Ashlyn, and her best friend, Seth, and the Summer King. And Ashlyn is a human who can see fairies, which is very dangerous because the fairies in this series are not nice people. They're not nice creatures. They're very evil. And she has this best friend, Seth, who's like such a manic pixie dream boy, but I did love it in 2007, even though I'm kind of off it now. He lives in like a train car. And because of that, the like iron keeps her safe when she's there. So basically the summer king, who is, as he sounds, he's the king of the summer court, approaches Ashlyn because he believes she is supposed to be the queen. And the story goes off from there. This is a five book series, but Ashlyn and Seth and the summer king are not the main characters in every one. So books two and four have different main characters. You do follow Ashlyn's basically love triangle, throughout the entire series. I will say, usually YA love triangles do not end the way I want them to, but this one did, which is probably why I like the series so much. So this is not, I wouldn't say like, if you like A Court of Thorns and Roses, read this, because it is a very different feel, because this is like an urban fantasy, not a high fantasy, and it's way more traditional YA. So like, there aren't super explicit sex scenes in this, because it's more of like a traditional YA feel which I'm not gonna get on a pedestal right now, but as a youth services librarian, I appreciate. So those are all my recommendations. Now let's talk about my TBR. So I have two paranormal romances on my TBR. The first one is Angelica Frankenstein Makes Her Match by Sally Thorne. I read the prologue yesterday, so I really, I haven't started it. It's not the book I'm reading right now. I was laying on the couch really comfortable and asked one of my children to bring me a book. And I was just like, any book. And this is what my daughter brought me. So I read the beginning. So this is about Victor Frankenstein's sister who's having a really unlucky time in love and decides to build a man, which is fantastic. And I really liked the prologue, which is very like um, sad. And it's beginning as to like why she's so lonely and why she's so kind of cut off from society. I know a big part of this is that the man she makes like can't figure out why he doesn't have a past and she doesn't really want to tell him why she, he doesn't have a past, but I'm very much looking forward to reading this. I think it'll be a perfect October romance and I've never read one in which a Frankenstein monster is the hero. The next one I have is Small Town Big Magic and I actually don't know how much romance is in this other than it's recommended to fans of 
The X Hex and Paybacks a Witch, which are both romances heavy on the contemporary fantasy. So I'm assuming this is going to be the same. This is about um, Emerson, who figures out that she lives in a town surrounded by witches, but she hasn't known because she failed some test. And when you fail the test, it makes it so you don't see magic, but you're still allowed to live there. And then something's going to happen that she can suddenly see magic again. It sounds very cozy. Um, I've read mixed reviews on it, so I'm probably going to save this one towards the end of the month. But on the back, it says she has complicated feelings about her childhood friend who's a cranky yet gorgeous local farmer named Jacob North. So I assume they're going to end up together. Probably, right? That sounds like a romance. And those are all my sexy spooky reads for this month and beyond. If you know me, I read sexy spooky reads all year round. It doesn't just have to be in October. I want to read about witches in January and July also pretty much every month of the year. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. And please, in the comments, drop me an emoji of your monster of your choice. Because I know we've got like, there's a witch emoji. I think there's a fairy emoji. There's definitely a Frankenstein emoji and a vampire and a mermaid. Probably some monsters, ghosts, whatever you want. Throw me it in the comments. Thank you for sticking around. And as always, I hope you're in the middle of a good book, about to start reading a good book, or about to start writing a great book. See you soon.